You are tuned into the leading internet radio station in the mother city. Radio East River. Radio East River. Radio East River. Radio East River. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mulue ne makaya. Single Radio East River. Sifuma ne kakuzo zongi social media platforms. Welcome to the leading internet radio station in the mother city. There are many ways to stream our shows. Visit us on our Facebook page, live at Radio East River. Also, visit us on our website, www.radioeastriver.co.za or download the Radio East River app, available and supported on any and all smart devices. Radio East River, die dan Radio Yes, Our station, our talent, our people. Later, caught a glimpse of what was coming. Ladies and gentlemen, the trio. You are listening to Radio Yesterova.
You are listening to Radio Yesterova. God bless you and a warm welcome here from the studios of Radio Yesterova. You're tuned into the program A Study in the Word with me, Brother Elmer, from the Cape Town Tabernacle Church. And may the Lord bless you and may He be with you. Yes, beautiful song we listen to, speaking about John the Revelator. He saw feet like brass, eyes like fire, and he heard a great voice that said, Come up higher. And then he says in Revelation chapter 4, And immediately I was in the Spirit. Hallelujah. And we just welcoming you tonight to just get in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Just get into the Spirit, just tune in, and just hear what God has to say. Now we see that in the book of Revelation, there is... A certain phrase that the Lord addresses to the churches at the end of each message. And he says, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Hallelujah. So it is the Spirit that speaks. Yes. And the Spirit speaks from the Word. And the Spirit confirms the Word. If you go to John 16, Jesus said that when the Holy Spirit will come, He will Bring into your remembrance what I have said. Yes. So the Holy Spirit will always vindicate and prove the Bible. The Holy Spirit will never contradict the Bible. But there is a spirit that contradicts the Bible. And it is the spirit of the Antichrist. And we've been speaking for the past few broadcasts on the spirit of the Antichrist. So last week and Thursday we had the privilege of uh, starting off in this topic of the spirit of the Antichrist. Sunday we continued and we showed you another form of the spirit of the Antichrist by that woman Jezebel. And tonight we shall continue speaking about the spirit of the Antichrist. And this is another addition to our teaching series on the topic of the Antichrist. So for those of you that have your Bibles already, you can uh, please open for me at the book of Revelation, chapter number 2, and we shall read... Verse 14. Now once again, it is Jesus speaking directly. So Jesus appeared unto John on the Isle of Patmos, and then he gave him an instruction to write the things down that he sees and hears, and then to send it to the seven churches which are in Asia. So it's not John speaking, it is not John's revelation, but it is the revelation of Jesus Christ. As stated in chapter number 1, in verse 1, it says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Hallelujah. So it is the revelation of Jesus Christ. So here we see the resurrected Lord speaking, and this message was sent to the seven churches, And there was a different message for each church. Hallelujah. And what was written for them is also for our benefit and for our learning. Even the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans 15 and verse 4. He says that whatsoever things were written before was written for our learning. So there Paul refers to the Old Testament writings. But today we can also point back and say what was written in both the Old and the New Testament is valid for us living in this day and in this age. Hallelujah. So we are aware that we are living in the end of the age, we are living at the end time, we are living in the last days, we are living near the return of Jesus Christ, and we need to tune in and take heed to what the Spirit says unto the churches, not what the messenger says unto the churches, or what someone else says unto the churches, but what the Spirit says unto the churches. Now Revelation chapter 2 and verse 14 But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. So we want to speak tonight about the doctrine of Balaam. Hallelujah. Now to give you a proper background of who Balaam was, we need to go back to the Old Testament writings in the book of Numbers. Numbers 22 
23 and 24. So Balaam was a false prophet that appeared in Old Testament times. And while God was leading Israel out of Egypt through the wilderness on their journey on their way to the promised land, the land that God swore unto Abraham that he would give unto him and his descendants after him. Yes, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob promised to give that portion of land which was known as the land of Canaan and today is known as the land of Israel. God made an oath, yes, he promised that he would give that land unto them. Now as they were on their way on their journey, they came to the land of Moab. Now Moab was family of Israel. Moab was the people that descended from the man Moab. And Moab was one of the sons of Lot. Now if you go into the book of Genesis chapter number 19, you will see that after Sodom and Gomorrah was burned down, there was this man Lot that survived because he found grace in the sight of God, him and his two daughters. His wife unfortunately turned around and she became a pillar of salt. Now after the destruction and devastation of Sodom, they were left as the sole survivors. And we see that these daughters of Lot, they made their father drunk and they slept with him. And they then conceived and they bore children of their own father, which is incest and which is not acceptable. But this is something that happened. Now just because it happened doesn't mean that God condoned it, but it is written for historical purposes so that we can have an actual record of what happened. Now one of the daughters of Lot bare a son and called his name Moab, and he was the patriarch of the people of Moab. The other one bore a son by the name of Ammon, and he was the father of the Ammonites. So we see that they descended from Lot, and Lot was also again the brother's child of Abraham. So they were all actually uh, family. They were somehow inter- interrelated. Yes, they, they were relatives, although it was generations later. But we see that Israel wanted to move in peace and just pass through the land. They were willing to pay for whatever their cattle or their flock would eat and drink and their people even for the water. Regardless what they had to pay, they were willing to pay that. But we see that there was this king by the name of Balak. And Balak was the one that really he feared because he heard of all the things that God did for Israel as he led them out of Egypt. And how that God defeated Pharaoh and his armies. So he feared Israel and therefore he hired Balaam, this uh, prophet. Now in the book of Numbers he's being called a prophet. Even in Second Peter chapter 2, he's being called a prophet. But if you go to the book of Joshua chapter 13, the Bible calls him a soothsayer. So that makes him in reality a false prophet. Yes, a diviner, a one that can foretell the future. And we see that he was hired, hired by Balak to come and curse the children of Israel. But before he went, God himself spoke to Balaam. And God says, that you cannot curse them which I have blessed. And Balaam unfortunately had to obey and he had to turn around. And he told Balak that he couldn't do it. And now we see that that was God's original word to Balaam. God told him to not go and curse the people of Israel. You cannot curse what God has blessed. And God's word cannot change. The Bible says Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Malachi 3 verse 6, the Bible says, I the Lord change not. So God said back then, you cannot curse what I have blessed. And God says the same today. We cannot curse what God is blessed. And God promised to bless the people of Israel. That is the Bible. That is the scripture. And we see that. This prophet Balaam, he was being offered money as a reward and he was being offered a large sum, a good enough sum of money to go and curse the people of Israel. And we see that eventually he became stubborn and he did as he was being summoned to do. And we know that God allowed him to go. Now from there we can see that God has a perfect will and God has a permissive will. So in God's perfect will, it was not meant for Balaam to go and curse the people of Israel. 
But we see that because he was he was nagging, he, he was pushing it. God eventually allowed him to go, but we see that he couldn't still he could still not curse them. And we see that even the angel of the Lord stood with a sword that was ready to kill Balaam, and the donkey on which he was riding saw the angel, and the donkey became fearful and fell under Balaam. And Balaam became frustrated and irritated with the donkey. And he started to hit the donkey. And then we see him starting to speak to the donkey. And then God allowed the donkey to speak back. And the donkey even told him, Have I not been your donkey that has been good to you all this time? And then we see that God opened his eyes so that he could see the angel with the sword that was ready to devour him. And we see that the, the, this prophet Balaam became so stubborn. That he became blinded, hallelujah. He could not even see, yes. Money makes people blind, yes. And because of the reward that was waiting, he was pushing and he was pushing and he could no longer even see the angel, yes. He was, he became so hardened in his own heart. And that is many times what happens when people choose the permissive will of God. When people's hearts become hardened, God eventually gives you into your own desires. We see this in Romans chapter 1, where the Bible speaks about how that mankind became perverted among themselves in a sexual way. And God eventually allowed Allowed them to fall into their own lust. And men desired men, woman desired woman. It's in Romans chapter 1 of the Bible. So God eventually allowed them to do whatever they want to do, but at the end of the day, they will reap what they sowed. And we see that this, this false prophet, uh, Balaam, he went, he prepared the altars and all these things, but he just couldn't get it right. To curse the people of God. And then he devised a plan. Yes. He devised a plan. And that plan was to have a feast. And during this feast. He gave instruction that these women of Moab. They had to dance around naked. And as they were dancing. We see that the men of Israel became seduced. And then they started to intermingle with the women of Moab. And we see right there. They committed fornication. And because they did this terrible thing, they kindled the anger of God. And that was what Balaam's plan was. He wanted God's anger to be kindled towards the people of Israel so that God himself could punish them. And we see that it became so terrible that God sent a plague amongst them. And the Bible says that 24,000 of them were slain. 24,000 of them Four fell. The Bible says in one passage, if you go First Corinthians chapter 10, it says in one day there fell 23,000. But if you go to Numbers, the Bible says the total that fell was 24,000. So we see that the wrath of God was kindled over his people because they fell in the sin by intermingling and committing this perversion act with the people of Moab. And God was displeased with it. And this entire event that was orchestrated by Balaam, the false prophet, it was his doctrine, it was his teaching, yes. It was his teaching to cast the stumbling block before the people of Israel, yes. And they fell in fornication. And they were having a nice time. They were having a party, a celebration, and they were eating things that were sacrificed unto idols, yes. So for a moment we see that Israel let their God down. And God allowed this terrible thing to come over them, this plague, and this destruction to, uh, to befall them, yes. And this was something that God hated. God hated it in the Old Testament and here we see that the same God of the Old Testament is the same God of the New Testament. The same God that hated what happened in the Old Testament is the same God, Jesus Christ. He still says he hates, yes, he hates this thing, yes. And he says, I have it against you that there are those that hold the doctrine of Balaam who taught Balak to cast a stumbling stone before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. Yes, this is a detestable thing that happened, and it displeased the Lord greatly. Now what applies to the Old Testament to Israel, applies in the New Testament to the church, because the church and Israel run parallel. We see how God dealt with them, 
as the Jews and how that God dealt with us as the Gentiles. The Gentiles being made up of all nations, of all tribes, of all peoples, of all nationalities, of all languages. We see that God also, He deals with us on, in a certain way. And Israel was called the church back then. If you read Acts 7 verse 38, the Bible calls Israel the church and the New Testament believers that are scattered all over the globe. They are also called the church. So the church doesn't mean a building necessarily. It means the called out ones. The word church in the Greek language means ecclesia. And Ecclesia means the called out ones. As God called Israel out of Egypt, so God calls the New Testament believer out of the world. Hallelujah. And they become the church. They become Ecclesia. They become the called out ones. Now we see that what Balaam did back then. Balaam died eventually. We know that he was killed. If you read in the book of Joshua 13, we see that the children of Israel eventually, they killed him, the soothsayer. But the spirit that was on Balaam, it continued to live. Now the same also with the church. Jesus died on the cross. He was buried, he rose again. But the same spirit that was on Jesus is on the church. Now we see that the devil takes his man, but not his spirit. God takes his man, but not his spirit. So that spirit of Balaam came over even into the New Testament. And we see that this message is addressed to the church in Pergamum or Pergamos. So that was also a city in Asia Minor. And in the city there was this congregation of believers and they made up the church in Pergamum. Yes. Now in Bible days you had one church in one city. There was a church in Pergamum. There was a church in Ephesus. There was a church in Sardis. There was a church in Corinthians. There was a church in Philippians or Philippi. We see that there was one church in one city. Today the picture is totally different. But the spirit that was on Balaam crept even in this church. And we see just as Balaam allowed the children of Israel to commit fornication and idolatry, so also this spirit came back into the New Testament church and we see that idolatry and paganism was introduced to Christianity. Now if you study church history and also what happened in Bible days, we see that Christianity was spread from the city of Jerusalem. That is where the gospel was first preached. Jesus said in Luke 24 that they must stay in the city of Jerusalem and they must wait for the promise of the Father. And we see from Jerusalem the gospel was preached, the the Christians were persecuted and eventually they spread all over the world. And as they were being persecuted and they were fleeing, we see that they also were spreading the gospel everywhere they were going. And many times they went into parts of the world where people were serving other gods, where people were were adherents to other religions. And in these places where they went, they made converts that converted to Christianity, but then there were also those that brought in the pagan practices of worshipping idols, and they mixed it with Christianity. Yes, and we see that that spirit is alive even today where idols are being worshipped. Now God commanded in Exodus chapter 20 that you shall not make any graven image of anything that is in heaven, on earth, or under the earth. You shall not bow down to it and worship it. So when God says that, God means that. So that means even a statue of Mary, a statue of Jesus, a statue of Paul, a statue of any other deity, of a bird, of whatever. God prohibited this from happening as God alone wants to worship as He is the only true God and the creator of all things. Now in church history, this happened, especially in the city of Rome. We see that paganism was being mixed with Christianity. And the pagan practices of lighting candles, of bowing to statues, of all these things that don't go inside with the Bible, that don't correspond with the Bible, these things were introduced into the church. And the church once again was taken a grip of by the doctrine of Balaam, by letting pure believers mix with these unbelievers, these pagans, not just by intermarrying them, but actually by teachings 
being mixed. Bible teachings being mixed with pagan teachings. Yes. And the Lord also says to commit fornication. Now fornication is not just the act in the natural. We know that fornication is defined as the act between two unmarried persons. Or a person that is married with a person that is unmarried. But in the spiritual sense of it, it can refer to idol worship. And this is what the doctrine of Balaam brought to pass. And that spirit of Balaam is still around. And it is still teaching people to commit idolatry and fornication and to sin against God. Yes, to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. Now we see that with Balaam, he had a prophecy over the people of Israel. And the prophecy that he had was really accurate. It was genuine. And Jesus never had an issue with the prophecy of Balaam. But it was the doctrine of Balaam. It was the teaching of Balaam that was the main issue. That was causing problems in the church. That was causing problems in Israel. And that's also causing problems in the church. And so we see today, there are also those that rise on the scene that are similar to Balaam. The Bible says in Matthew 24 verse 24 that there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and they shall do great signs and wonders and miracles if it were possible to deceive even the very elected. Yes, that is what the Bible says. So Balaam's prophecy was accurate. He was even preach, uh, he was even uh, prophesying about the Messiah. He was speaking about the star that would rise out of Jacob and that would that would uh, crush the the side of the head of Moab. He was speaking even of the Messiah. He was speaking of this people that were so great in number. So his prophecy was accurate, but his teaching was incorrect. And today there are also these false prophets, which just like Balaam through divination, could speak things that are true. But the teaching, the doctrine, doesn't go inside with the Bible doctrine, with the Bible teaching. Now the Bible says that the first church in Acts 2 verse 41, they remain steadfastly in the apostles doctrine. Now we're going to take a break quickly. We're going to listen to that song again, John the Revelator. After that we return to tonight's broadcast of a study in the word. God bless you. Radio Israel. Radio Israel. Radio Israel. Radio Israel. You are listening to Radio Yesterova. Radio Yesterova. Our station, our talent, our people. Kidang Rati. One from the Isle of Patmos, a man was cast one day. When he was left alone to die, he began to pray. The Holy Ghost fell on him. The Spirit came down He began to ride A hundred feet to the song The his name was John He said to the John The Lord of the Revelation
offers the best quality locally sourced and 100% halal meats. Visit our store at Sambury Square Mall. Contact us at 021-565-04-9 TPM for your halal meats. Radio Yesterafir Onse stasi, onse talent, onse mense WhatsApp ons by 064-536-9095 Talk to us, the dang rack here. Feel good, there is a radio, yes, there will be. Mr. Fee, our station, our talent, our people. The dang rack here. God bless you and welcome back to tonight's broadcast of a study in the word. So we're speaking tonight about the doctrine of Balaam, hallelujah, praise the name of the Lord, so we're just grateful to have revelation, not just the letter of the word, but the correct understanding of the word, that is what the revelation is all about people, it's about having the correct understanding of the Bible, and this understanding comes through the Holy Spirit, because he's the one that puts you into remembrance of the words of Jesus, and that glorifies Jesus, he's the one that gives you the correct understanding, yes, so we're speaking in the book of Revelation chapter 2 and verse number 14. Now we see that the spirit of Balaam, it continued. Balaam died as a soothsayer in the book of Joshua chapter 13, verse 22. And we see that that spirit continued and it crept even into the church. And the apostle John was writing in First John chapter 2, that there are many antichrists. You have heard that the antichrist is coming, but there are even many antichrists now. And the spirit of Balaam is just another uh, form. Yes, this doctrine of Balaam is just another form of the antichrist spirit. That is crept into the church, introducing idolatry and fornication. Yes. Now, this Balaam fellow, we see that his motive and objective was money. He was being offered a reward to come and curse the people of God, but he could not do so because God had blessed him. And if we compare it in modern days, the Bible says that they will arise false prophets and false teachers, and they will do great signs, wonders, and miracles if it was possible to deceive even the very elected. Now we see that with Balaam, his objective was the reward, it was the money. And today with the false prophets, it's also the money. They are the ones that are scamming people in the name of the Lord, that are lying to people in the name of the Lord, that are deceiving people in the name of the Lord, just to milk the money out of the people. There are those that promise reward if you would give unto their money, God would bless you with more money. The sad case is that in many instances, this is not true. People sow and invest many, many sums of money and then in return they get nothing. Now the Bible gives us principles when it comes to money. The Bible teaches that we should work. Even the Apostle Paul, he was a tent maker. He was using his hands to toil and to labor. 
Yes, we see that Noah being a man of God, he was a farmer. If you look at Peter and his brother Andrew and some of the other apostles, we see that they were fishermen. So they did have an occupation in the natural. They did have a job and they were earning money by using their hands and working. But we see the false prophets rise on the scene, promising wealth and riches to people if people would first Give money to them. There are those that charge for prayer. There are those that charge for prophecy. Now this we see was never done in the Bible by the true servants of God. No servant of God will tell you to first pay him a sum of money and then he can pray pray for your problem. No true servant of God will give a prophecy with the... The, the requirement that you must first give a sum of money. But true men of God will tell you what God has to say in his word. And so we see once again the spirit of Balaam, the doctrine of Balaam manifesting. Yes, people that are deceiving people and we see that money is, is all about it. Yes. Now we see what this Balaam fellow, the Bible clearly proves that his prophecy was accurate. But it was the teaching, the doctrine of Balaam that was wrong. And so it is even in today. There are many false anointed ones. False Christ. The word Christ means anointed one. There are many false teachers. And the the Bible calls them out as such in the book of Matthew chapter 24. Now it might seem that when they prophesy that it is accurate. Yes, even Balaam's prophecy was accurate. He spoke 100% truth when he spoke about the Messiah that would be a star that would rise out of Jacob, out of Israel, the scepter that would come and it would, would bruise the, the, the head of, of Moab. And when he speak, spoke about this great multitude of people, his prophecy was accurate, but it was his doctrine that, that caused the church to sin. His false teaching, his false doctrine that caused them to commit idolatry. And today also that spirit is also alive and the teaching is alive. People that are worshipping other gods, people that are worshipping and that are committing fornication. Now about Balaam, we also have descriptions of him in the book of Second Peter chapter number 2. Second Peter chapter number 2. So we see that the main problem with this fellow was that he was a false teacher. Yes, Balaam was a false teacher. So his prophecy was accurate. And he, he came across as being an anointed one that could prophesy these things. <coughs> and he even had a reputation as a prophet. Therefore, Bala could summon him, summon him to come and curse the people of Israel. But now we read in Second Peter chapter 2. Where Peter also speaks and makes reference back to, to this man. He says, Having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and hard they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb donkey, speaking with man's voice, forbade the madness of the prophets. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. So here once again we see the apostle Peter highlighting Balaam, this false prophet, yes, and giving the church warning. Now he starts chapter 2 with the following words. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who probably shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. So here Peter gives an explicit warning to the New Testament church and he brings into their remembrance that just as there was false prophets among the people of Israel, so there shall be false teachers amongst the New Testament church. And what they will do is they will bring in damnable heresies. So heresy is that which does not agree with the original, the original teachings of Jesus and the apostles. Yes, now in Acts chapter 1 verse 4, the Bible says that Jesus through the Holy Spirit gave instructions unto the apostles. And then the Bible says in Acts 2 verse 41 that they remained steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. And then... 
The Bible says in Ephesians 2 verse 20 that the church is built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So Paul also gave warning in 1 Timothy chapter number 6 and verse 3. You can also read 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 6 where he says that if there's any brother that walks disorderly, and not according to the traditions or the commandments of us, the apostles, that we should have no fellowship with such a person. Such a person is branded and classified as a heretic. Yes, a heretic. Somebody that disagrees with the teachings of the apostles and the teachings of Jesus Christ. And that is what the Antichrist spirit does. As we've said, the word anti means against. So if it's Antichrist and Christ is the word, it's anti-word. It's teachings that contradict the word, that contradict the Bible. Yes. Now, even the apostle Judas was making, or the apostle Jude was making a reference to Balaam. And we see, he writes in his epistle, which only has uh, one chapter, and he speaks in verse 11. Woe unto them, speaking about the false teachers, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for a reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. Once again, the apostle Jude highlights that the false teachers are greedy, Greedy for reward. And even Peter was speaking that Balaam loved the reward of unrighteousness. And so the false teachers in our day and age that follow the doctrine of Balaam, those that preach and introduce idolatry into the church by letting people worship, worship statues, worship according to the commandments of men. We see that Jesus was giving a sharp rebuke. In Mark 7 verse 7, in vain do you worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. So we see such worship is rejected by God. If we are worshiping according to the commandments of men, if we are worshiping according to the doctrine or the teaching of men, but if we want to worship God in a pleasing and acceptable way, the Bible says in John 4 verse 24, That God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But we see today that doctrine of Balaam, it is still reigning in many churches. People are still being seduced and being introduced to damnable heresies. Now we see with Balaam. How did he he brought this festival about where the people of Moab, they were just dancing and they were just celebrating. And at the same time, they were eating food sacrifice unto idols and Israel was celebrating with them. And today also this dancing thing has been brought inside the church. Now, there are scriptures that point that one can dance in the spirit. We see in Acts chapter or Exodus chapter 15 that Miriam, uh, the sister of Moses and Aaron, even she took the tambourine and they were dancing and rejoicing before the Lord and they were singing a song of victory. We see in the book of Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 6, even David was dancing before the Lord. So we see that this is something that can happen, that you can rejoice in the Lord and dance. But if you are dancing in an immoral way, and if you are dancing being dressed immoral, just like the people of Moab did, and it was this dancing that introduced the immorality, and it was this that actually caused the people of Israel to commit fornication, when they saw these beautiful ladies with their half-dressed bodies, dancing and for a moment they forgot about the commandment of their God they forgot about the word of their God and they committed fornication with the daughters of Moab and this kindled the fire the anger of the Lord and we see that the Lord visited them with a plague and we see that same spirit also being introduced today of immorality in the church and the church as it is in the condition it is today is not where it is supposed to be before the Lord. But we see that the Lord gives gives a reward if we repent. Revelation chapter 2, we can go back, and we see that this message, he says, Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Now the sword of his mouth is his word. Hallelujah. If you go to Revelation chapter 19, 
The Bible says that out of his mouth went forth a sharp two-edged sword. And if you go to Hebrews 4 and verse 12, the Bible says that the word of God is more quick and more sharp than any two-edged sword. Hallelujah. So God says, if you don't repent, I will come and I will fight against them with the sword of my mouth, which is his word. So the Lord commands He's not giving an option. He's not asking you nicely. But as the Lord, he has the right to command. Hallelujah. The Greek word for Lord means Kyrios. And that means that he's the commander. He commands. He says, repent or else I will come unto thee quickly. And I will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Now what was written for this church in Pergamum is also valid for churches even today. The Bible is still relevant. It is still valid. Times might have changed, but God hasn't changed. And God's word also has not changed. He says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receive it. So there is a reward for the overcomer. Hallelujah. There is a reward that awaits them that is willing to repent and to line up in obedience with the word of God. Now this is not the only passage where Jesus tells people to repent. In X, uh, or the book of Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17, the Bible says, and from that time Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We see that the forerunner that was sent before Jesus, the man by the name of John the Baptist, the messenger that was sent before God's face to prepare the way of the Lord, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. We see that out of those that are born of women, there was no one greater than John the Baptist. Even Jesus said so. And John, being the introducer of the Messiah, he preached the same thing. He told the people to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So whether it is John the Baptist, whether it is Jesus Christ, whether it is the apostles, whether it is the prophets, they had one common message, and that message was to repent. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Acts 2 verse 38, Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and unto your children, and to many that are far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call unto him. So we see throughout the Bible, there is a central message, there is a central theme, and that is that people should repent, that people should turn, that people should come back to God, that people should reconcile, hallelujah, be reconciled back to the Creator. And that is the main purpose why Jesus came, to reconcile us back to God, through his death on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. So that is what the Lord is saying. And he says, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Now not everyone can hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Jesus says in Matthew 13 verse 16, Blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for the hear. For many prophets and righteous people have desired to see and to hear what you see and hear, and they did not see. And in that particular passage, Jesus was addressing his disciples and not the masses. So there are many people that are hearing, but not all are hearing what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. Even in the prophet Isaiah, God was rebuking the people that they have eyes and they cannot see, ears and they cannot hear. And that same scripture in Isaiah, Jesus quoted in the gospel according to Mark, that there are those that have eyes and do not see, ears and they do not hear. So your prayer should be that the Lord will give you eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for the scripture, which is forever valid. I pray that your word will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish the mission and the purpose for which you sent it. Lord, many are in darkness, many are bound in prison. I pray that your word will just set them free. And now, Lord, may your spirit move and give them revelation and understanding. I pray that you will bless each and every person that was tuned in tonight. Lord, there are those that are sick and afflicted. There are those that are poor and are needy. 
There are those that have needs, Lord. There are those that I cannot see, but you see them, Lord, and you know them. And I pray that your spirit will just move, Lord, and that you will touch their hearts and lives. I pray that you will bless far above that I can ask or pray in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now God bless you and thank you for those that were tuned into tonight's broadcast, A Study in the Word, with me, Brother Elmer, from the Cape Town Tabernacle Church. If there's anyone that would like to hear more about the message, you can contact me on 083-670-4657. 083-670-4657. May the Lord bless you and be with you until the next time. As I go off the air, we listen to that beautiful song again, John the Revelator. God bless you. Amen. You are listening to Radio Yesterova. Radio Yesterova. Our station, our talent, our people. The Dung Ruggy caught a glimpse of what was coming. Ladies and gentlemen, the trio. You are listening to Radio Yesterova. Radio is the river, radio is the river, radio is the river, radio is the radio is the river, radio is the river, radio is Looking for your dream home? At Central Blue, we have just the right types of homes for you. Discover our eco-conscious townhomes complete with free appliances. That's right, you heard. A fridge, a TV and a washing machine, all for free. Or explore our brand new freestanding homes. Each with its private garden, where you can relax with a cup of coffee or watch your children play. Or, are you more of a modern apartment type of person? Check out our community-centric apartments, perfect for safe and affordable living. Your dream home awaits. Visit Central Blue today in Blue Downs. Come to Central Blue, the heart of Blue Downs, where it truly feels like home.
Shout out to Radio Disturber. This is Shay. And Jerome Parr. Shout out to Stereo 360 and Jeremiah, a.k.a. Utters of God, for holding us down. We, we are KTG, KTG and keeping the gospel. gospel.